Hail to thee, wise spirit, learn as never learnt, that from heaven or near it flourished thy whole heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springest like a cloud of fire. The blue deep thou windest and thin still dost store and soaring ever sinnest. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun, o'er which clouds are brightened, thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun. The pale purple even melts around thy flight like a star of heaven in the broad daylight. Thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight, keen as are the arrows of that silver spear whose intense lamp narrows in the white dawn clear. Until we hardly see, we feel that it is there. <laughs> All the earth and air with thy voice is loud, as when night is bare for one lonely cloud, the moon rains out her beams, and heaven is overflowed. What thou art we know not, what is most like thee? From rainbow clouds there flow not drops so bright to see as from thy presence showers a rain of melody, like a poet hidden in the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden, till the world is wrought to sympathy, and with hopes and fears that he did die, like a high-born maiden in a palace tower, soothing her love-laden soul in secret hour, with music sweet as love, which overflows with power, like a glow-warm golden and a gel of dew, scattering unbeheld its aerial hue, among the flowers and grass which screen it from like a rose embowered in its own green leaves, by warm winds deflowered till the scent it gives makes faint with too much sweet those heavy wind thieves. Sound of vernal showers on the twinkling grass, rain awakened flowers, all that was ever joyous, and clear and fresh thy music doth surpass. Teach us, sprite or bird, what sweet thoughts are thine. I have never heard praise of love or wine that panted forth a flood of rapture so divine. Chorus hymnal, or triumphal chant, matched with thine would be all but an empty vaunt. A thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want. What objects are the fountains of thy happy strain? What fields or waves or mountains? What shapes of sky or plain? What love of thy own kind? What ignorance of pain? With thy clear, keen joints, languor cannot be. Shadow of annoyance never came near thee. Thou lovest, but never knew love's sad chastity. Waking or asleep, thou of death must deem things more true and deep than we mortals dream. For how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream? We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Yet if we could scorn hate and pride and fear, if we were things born not to shed a tear, I know not how thy joy we ever should come near. Better than all measures of delightful sound, better than all treasures that in books are found, thy skill the poet were, thou scorner of the ground. Teach me half the gladness that thy brain must know. Such harmonious madness from my lips would flow, the world should listen then as I am listening now. So one important thing to consider about To a Skylark is that Shelley is a very lyrical poet, right? So it's not necessarily a, a plot line or anything from the story. It's more him just talking about what the Skylark means to him and he compares it to other things and considers the beauty of the song in comparison to human songs and things. Yeah, so uh, Shelley compares the Skylark song to human songs and about like how the Skylark can feel all this joy and is never sad while the humans live in this sad state. Because like there's a line in one of the stanzas where it says, our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. So like even when humans are laughing and having a great time, there's still some pain deep inside them and there's still some like sadness and darkness in them. With why the Skylark... Uh, it's just pure joy all the time. And also he's like, 
our human, our sweetest songs, as in like humans, are those that tell of saddest thought. So like all of our beautiful music and stuff, it's about like sad events and just awful things. Sure, yeah, yeah. Um, and to continue on with that, there's a line about um, thou lovest, but ne'er knew love's sad satiety. And so that's considering how the fullness of love can never be can never be experienced by a man. You know, a man can love to a certain point, but he can never reach that purity that the lark has. Yes, yeah, so to continue on with like the purity of the uh, Skylark in its song, Shelley also uses a lot of uh, similes to compare the Skylark to things like a poet, a highborn maiden, and so for like the highborn maiden, it's like she's in this palace tower hidden high up where you can't really see her, just like you can't really see the Skylark. But you can hear her beautiful music that's filled with love, which is exactly what the Skylark is. And then also, uh, farther on, he compares it and he says, All that ever was joyous and clear and fresh, that music doth surpass. So, like, Percy Shelley thinks that this Skylark song is like the most beautiful thing ever. Everything else in the England, or everything else in the world is not as beautiful as the Skylark song. So I think what's important about all these comparisons that Shelley makes to the Skylark song is that it kind of reveals that humans, because of all the things that we're exposed to in our life and stuff, it kind of takes the innocence away from the love and, well, and really from from any pure feeling. However, with many things in nature, they just are what they are, right? So the bird is high above and it's just singing and that just is what it is, you know? There's a certain freedom to it and they don't have to worry about, like, let's say other birds going to war with them or anything like that. It's just they can live their lives freely. So why do you think that Shelley wrote this? Like, what's so important about the bird song that he had to write the poem? So, like, I think... That Shelley like has a deep interest in feeling what this bird feels because like all of this is talking about how beautiful the bird is and like all it can experience and it just makes it seem like Shelley wants to experience that for himself he wants to have this full love and just be joyous all the time and not have to go through all the pain and suffering that humans do he wants the, that innocence that this bird has the just pure joy and innocence yeah that's good I I think that another reason why he might care that much is that he sees the lark as a version of himself. There, there's a line in the poem where he says, like a poet, hidden in the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden. So that's referencing the lark singing in the nature, and I think that he considers the song to be a beautiful poem, and he wishes that he could write like that and get that, um, that raw feeling out to the public. So like all in all, Shelley's just like wanting to convey this message that in nature and like with the skylark, nature can feel all these pure emotions that humans are hindered from feeling. Like we as humans can't feel as deeply as skylarks and we just, we don't have the ability that nature does to connect with like raw emotion. And so Shelley just like wants to be able to feel that and wants to write a poem that can convey that pure joy and just he wants to he wants for humans to be able to feel the pure joy that things in nature like the Skylark can.